Today we have a closer look at what is arguably Grand Seiko's greatest hit, The Snowflake. Reference SBGA 211. This watch has been around for a very long time and a lot has been written about it to date. I will give you the essentials in the next 60 seconds. The watch was first released in 2010. Back then it still had the old Seiko branded dial. The dials have since been updated moving the Grand Seiko logo to 12 o'clock. The watch takes its nickname from the dial color and texture resembling fresh snowfall. Complications on this watch are limited to time, date and the power reserve indicator. The indices, the hands and yes, even the date window all have exquisite finishing. The secret ingredient powering it all is the magnificent spring drive movement, a quintessential Grand Seiko movement, responsible for that ultra smooth gliding second hand. It lives in its own world, somewhere in between the mechanical watch world and the quartz world. The 41mm case is made from high resistance titanium and is very light. Saratsu polishing results in mirror polished case sides, a hand polishing method traditionally used to finish Japanese swords. The case shape on the snowflake lacks the sharper angles found on Grand Seiko's famed 44GS case. No visible crown guards, however the screw down crown does get some protection as it sinks in the side of the case and gives the watch its 100 meter water resistance. This is a true Grand Seiko and that means you will want to bring a loop when looking at this watch. The finishing is just that good and worth a closer look. Let's begin with the snowflake dial. Keep a close look on how the texture changes as we move through this video. The hands are mirror polished and resemble tiny little swords. As a result of the hand polishing, the hands play with the light and take on a different color depending how they pick up the light as you can see right now. They are very legible. In case the top side of the hands turns almost black as we can see right now, the beveled edge will turn silver. The opposite is also true. Maximum points for legibility if we briefly ignore the hands have no loom. The same finishing is found on the blue heated seconds hand that glides above the dial. The power reserve indicator is quite minimalist with a nicely textured dial and no obvious wording or color supplied. The applied indices are in a league of their own. Nine sides to each index, perfectly polished, simply gorgeous. Take a moment to appreciate the effort that went into these often neglected little details. They match the design of the watch face exceptionally well and as you can see they pick up the light in similar fashion as the hands. These must be some of the most satisfying indices on just about any dial. This eye for detail also extends to the often neglected date window. As you look closer you can see multiple sides and finishes all on what is essentially a simple date window. To finish the Grand Seiko logo is applied and the remaining two lines of text are printed. Now that we are done with the dial side, let's talk about what is happening under the hood here. This is the revered spring drive movement at work. Dismissed by some as a coarse movement, I find that highly inaccurate. This is an ingenious mechanical movement. The spring drive movement is powered by a mainspring just like all other mechanical watches. The movement is composed of over 200 separate parts. Spring drive uses what Grand Seiko calls a trisynchro regulator, a mechanism to control the speed at which the spring unwinds, resulting in the gliding seconds hand. In other words, magic. The movement, which uses a homegrown quartz oscillator, is powered by a mainspring, not by a battery. This is not a coarse movement, it is a mechanical movement or if you want to call it that, a hybrid movement, but really a technical marvel that I can't stop admiring. Visible edges are nicely beveled and the decorations are more than sufficient. Now how does it wear? Well it wears very light on the wrist, a rather strange sensation if you are used to wearing steel or gold watches which are much heavier than this titanium one. That can be a good or a bad thing actually. 
The size feels quite right and it sits nicely on the wrist. Shown here on a bracelet, the snowflake also looks very good on a wide range of leather straps. The bracelet is comfortable but not best in class. The clasp looks fantastic and sits very low and nicely against the wrist. However, as a result, there is no real micro adjustment possible. Fun fact, the links on the bracelet are held together by pins and collar as titanium and screws don't like each other very much. This watch has a lot of details, truly a lot of details, which are making this a visual spectacle as we have just seen. Keep in mind, however, that this was under a macro lens from up close. From a distance, this watch is not a busy or a loud watch at all. In fact, most of the details almost fade away. As a result, the watch is very understated and an easy choice for daily wear. The snowflake is quite unique in combining this level of finishing and versatility. As this watch has an automatic movement, features time and date, has a 3-day power reserve and also includes a 100 meter water resistance, this actually makes for an outstanding go anywhere, do anything wristwatch. In fact, the Grand Seiko Snowflake makes my list of possible perfect one watch collections. I can't think of any other brand that brings this level of finishing at this price. I also can't think of any other brand that brings this level of detail and finishing at twice the price. This watch offers visual abundance from up close and elegant simplicity from a distance.